Yeah, so about stable, volatile back parts and security, actually. Um, so first I want to have a look at the current policies um, for each of the uh, uh, suites or archives. Um, you have um, here, for instance, um, the one for uh, stable. So if you want to do an up, uh, update in stable, um, uh, we want uh, it to be a fix for a security issue uh, or a fix for a critical bug. Um, a critical bug that's then uh, critical for the users or for the maintainers. Uh, it can then also be, of course, a fix uh, for installability or uh, buildability or uh, to get uh, the architectures back in sync. And, and then, of course, uh, how, how it works is that uh, you send the mail to the release list uh, with a patch uh, for review. And the patch um, should actually already be applied and unstable, so it's already a bit tested. Then, um, if you look at the one for volatile, don't know if you can read it, but um, there is a whole list. And the thing is, um, volatile is uh, was not official, um, and one of the remaining items that remembers of that is um, that the package uh, should be prepared in coordination with the maintainer. Uh, so currently we actually as expect the maintainer to do it himself. But of course there can still be uploads done uh, by non-maintainers, but um, normally it's the maintainer. Um, and as you can see it even mentions uh, that Volatile is not backboards. Um, so things that um, arrive in Volatile um, are actually not backports and vice versa. Um, and one of the uh, most important things for volatile is um, it's for um, data uh, that is volatile, so data that changes a lot. Um, but the only thing that is accepted in volatile is uh, packages that make sure it keeps working with the volatile data and the data itself, of course. And then if you look at uh, policy for backports, uh, it's easily, uh, it's actually a quite uh, easy policy. It's, um, you have to make sure you're aware of all the issues you have with the backports, so you should subscribe to uh, a user list. Uh, you should make sure that what you want to have in backports is already in testing. And um, so backports are usually um, um, new versions of software. Uh, you want uh, users to be able to install on their uh, stable system. Um, but of course, these uh, new versions can uh, also introduce new regressions. Uh, so it's important that you follow up and fix the issues, um, and especially the security issues uh, yourself. And the, the main policy is that uh, a package um, should first enter testing before it can enter a backport. Um, and one of the things the FTP masters of uh, backports don't like is that that you would upload um, just a rebuild of the package and testing into backports. There are quite some issues uh, with not allowing it, but and that's the current policy. So uh, users are actually. Um, considered to use pinning uh, for packages they want to use from testing directly and um, next to it the backports archive. 
so far stable. It were only uh, really small fixes for security issues and really critical bugs. For volatile, it's all about uh, data that moves fast, like uh, for instance, for um, definitions of antivirus and um, things like that, or um, for instance, time zones, things that uh, change a lot, uh, but data. And uh, of course, also the packages that are related uh, to make sure it still works. And backports is actually uh, anything um, with a newer version, uh, but of course, uh, it has already to be in testing. And if it's exactly the same as in testing, it's not allowed. And then um, for completeness, uh, completeness, I also included um, the one for security. Um, for security, it's uh, a bit diff um, bit different in the sense that um, if it's non-public yet, um, you want to make sure that uh, it doesn't get leaked yet. So the first thing you do for any security issue is normally you contact the security team and they tell you um, what you should do. If you should um, make it public, if, if it's already public, if you should send a patch to the bug report, if you should prepare an upload or is someone already preparing one, things like that. So um, like you can see, the most important thing is first talk to the security team and only then upload when they agree, of course. Um, sometimes uh, the security team thinks some security issues uh, are not uh, fit for the security archive. Uh, that can have many reasons, uh, but one of the reasons is sometimes that um, they lack manpower um, and they think the issue is not critical enough. In that case, they advise to contact the release team to see if it's still um, fit for uh, point release. So um, the thing I uh, really want to see is that instead of actually uh, four different policies, I want to see uh, a joint policy for all uh, the suites and archives. So it's really clear for any user and any developer um, in what suite or archive the package should uh, reside and how the user uh, can use it, where the user should find the updated software. Um, so um, my idea was um, to ask the audience, and uh, maybe even uh, some people on IRC, um, to see uh, if they have ideas how to make uh, that happen. So um, if you have suggestions, uh, please shoot. No one? I don't know. Sorry if this is a silly question. Uh, I'm reading in your uh, screen that uh, um, it is recommended to uh, uh, send only the DFG set and the DSC files. Um, mm, how do you do that? Uh, no devs? You mean on this screen or? In that screen, yes. that line. Oh yeah, yeah, sure. Is that uh, very new? But and uh, that's for the security archive. Yes. Um, the thing with security archive is that the security team wants to really be sure that um, the built packages are built um, by machines of uh, Debian itself or by themselves and not by um, a maintainer because 
it can be that the environment is not uh, clean enough things like that they, they want to be really sure that um, the source corresponds uh, with the binaries yes, but they will provide it by uh, putting them somewhere in people living or for example not by by actually up uploading them is is yeah, that the, so the normal procedure the normal procedure is that you contact the security team uh, and then they they'll tell you um how they like to proceed um in the normal case it's indeed that you send the patch or the source package to them but sometimes they also ask you to upload Um, as there don't seem to be any uh, suggestions yet, I'll um, show you a bit more about um, one of the issues. So in Volatile you have, um, for instance, uh, Klamath, uh, Klamath data, um, but for instance also uh, Pigeon. And so why is Pigeon on uh, Volatile at the moment? Pigeon doesn't have any Volatile data. Um, well, not as far as I know. Um, but the thing is, some packages, they uh, rely on uh, APIs that are out of Debian. Um, there are APIs for protocols, um, or APIs uh, for web applications, or they uh, scrape uh, some web pages and um, interpret themselves um, what they should be or you have uh, something like flash plugin non-free and um, that downloads the binaries and um, so at install time uh, it downloads the binaries uh, to install them um, these kind of packages um, of course if something changes in the API or uh, the binary um, provided by upstream, um, they are not installable anymore in um, stable or they don't work anymore and they lose functionality. And then the question is of course, um, where do we fix it? Where do we want the users and the developers to look um, for the fixed package uh, to be able to continue using the package. And for Pigeon, um, if I don't, um, if I'm not mistaken, it was the Yahoo API that changed. Um, and we decided to fix it in Volatile. Um, one of the things we want to try is um, when we move Volatile to FTP master proper, so uh, merging the uh, the archives, but still have a separate suite uh, on FTP master, um, to make sure that um, you can first upload to Volatile, and when everything looks okay in Volatile, everything works, uh, everything is stable, that we consider um, moving it uh, to some point release. Um, so that's already uh, one of the uh, things we are considering. Um, so, for instance, um, Flash plugin non-free was not included in uh, the Lenny release because we thought it was um, too often that the uh, that the binary upstream changed uh, to make it uh, sensible to include it in stable because probably half of the time or more, it would just not be installable. If we would have a mechanism that, um, well, packages like that could end up in volatile or something like that, um, and make sure that we uh, sync from time to time to stable proper, it, it's probably a better solution. Um, but sometimes, um, that's not enough because um, for volatile, it's only meant uh, to um, for for volatile data. 
and you can interpret an API as data, but um, sometimes you need so many changes to comply with the API that it's not really sensible to, um, to even include it in Volatile. Um, there, there was meant to be a Volatile Sloppy for that. Um, but volatile sloppy at the moment is not used at all. Um, so maybe if we can make a joint policy um, that it's way more clear uh, for um, developers, maybe we can solve that too, that um, all packages um, with fixes for stable um, can end up in volatile, volatile sloppy or a point release. Um, and then, of course, we, uh, we still have backports. Um, I think it's uh, not a good idea to exclude um, packages from testing, um, so the same packages in testing from uh, entering in backports. And the reason is that it's even more complicated for the user because he has to use uh, apt pinning, backports, Volatile, volatile sloppy, security, and stable, all in one um, source dot list to be able to use it all. So then he even has to uh, to use testing um, as well with pinning. Uh, what do you think uh, can be an improvement uh, in that regard? Um, is this on? Yes. Okay. Uh, one of the things I always thought, because I usually run stable, um, and I do local backports for myself, but most users can't do that, was um, probably a way to officially um, back uh, backports. It's probably one of the main things we should focus on. But some way of unifying them is probably s uh, unifying backports and volatile and this kind of things, and actually say, okay, we officially back this up. I know volatile is official, but backwards and and mem Sorry? Yes, I know it will be soon, but it's. Mm, uh, the, uh, I know when I first started using Debian quite some time ago, I was really re reluctant to using backports because it was clearly stated this is not an official resource. And it turned out that after Debcom 7, it was clear for me that, well, it's not official but it's backed up by Debian developers. So it's, in, in a sort of way, it's official, but it's not clearly stated that Debian actually supports this. Um, is this turned on? Okay. Um, it will be soon backports Debian org and as such official. We already had the talks. It's just a matter of doing the work and getting it over. Um. There is another thing that is missing that is the bug tracking system. It currently doesn't know anything at all about backports or even volatile versions. So if you report a bug report against a volatile version, the BTS doesn't know where to fit it in. Um, that's basically due to the way the BTS gets the version information and the uh, other archives which aren't on FTP master, don't send the version information over. As soon as Volatile is in the main archive, Volatile version information will be known. And I think we can manage to get the BTS to also know backwards Debian org versions. We just have to push a set of files we are generating with every upload. Uh, from my point of view, uh, security is, uh, is not an issue for a user. It's something that is very well controlled and I don't think for users it should be visible that they use security. I mean, it's there and security bugs will get pushed to it and automatically upgrade. I 
from my point of view as a user, it's, it, security is not an issue. If backports will get into the of, will be official and will be officially supported, then I think that keeping volatile for data and uh, backports for programs that needs lots of changes due to changed APIs or something like that should be uh, good enough and have only two categories of extra things on top of stable. You say that uh, you were thinking about uh, some time kind of. Uh, what do you mean by a joint um, uh, policy? Uh, apply, apply the same rules or a document which uh, explains everything in only one document? Or yeah, I what want do you mean? to. I want to come to one document that explains um, all uh, the suites um, you can upload to, and um, so that it's clear for a developer. And then also um, one document that explains to the user where he can find the software he's looking for. Um, I want to come to back uh, back to the issue with respect to security support. Um, we managed to get backports uh, supported in the security tracker, so it's currently also visible, possible to follow which issues are still outstanding. It's still lacking a bit of manpower to get it done. I usually go over the list and ping the maintainers, but it's just me currently following up to that and that is possibly one of the things that really needs to get done. I'm trying to bring up a service that will help with that but uh, if you want to help me with getting security, port, uh, security support for backports into a better shape, please come to me. Um, also, I, um, I want to point out that my feeling, my personal feeling, and some of the users which I've talked to is that stable, although it's officially supported, I, I had always had the feeling that there aren't that many people in actually supporting it. So Debian developers mostly try to, to work when some package of their own isn't working in unstable, but once stable, it's out the door, most of them just don't care about stable. And I think we should probably take that into account and try to figure out a way how we can manage to motivate developers to use or at least try to be more supportive of stable and add more, more manpower to that. The reason w why I'm doing local backports is that there aren't any official backports. And the reason why uh, some applications end up being backported by myself on my own archive is from, and it's just because I want a newer version. So, or, or maybe, I think you, you get the point. Maybe you should just try to motivate people to use, uh, to add more support to stable actually. Just motivate it. I, I personally use stable, as I said, mostly because I, um, I think it's what the users use usually, even on desktops. But after th six months, I found it really hard to actually still stick with stable because we don't have, uh, let's say, develop uh, desktop applications and things which evolve really fast for stable. So. Um, the developer shouldn't support stable more in that case. What you want is basically new info, new packages, new versions in stable. And that's by policy not done, except for a few exceptions at the dot and a half release. What developers should support more is backports, and we try to get that support more by making it a backports.debian.org, making it more known to developers and probably more easy to upload. It will always be an archive that has 
its own policy and rules to follow. But maybe people like you who are building an own archive should not do that, but go into backports and do that. It's not that hard to upload to backports instead. I, I don't have official Debian developer status currently, so. Well, there's an NM process for that. That I can be solved. Yeah, I know, but <laughs> that's, that's the current situation. Well, even for backports, you can find sponsors. Um, you know, was complaining that um, the actual policy of backports um, has a rule that you don't have to upload uh, packages which can be just in installed from testing. And um, for edge backports, um, there was a situation where got packages uploaded um, which don't have to uh, the need to to do that. I, I see that it's easy for, for users to, to just throw the, the up line in and install it, but uh, there was ending up packages which was uploaded just once and then nobody took care of it. So if you, uh, if you lower that entrance rule and uh, make it official, maybe you have much more work for the people doing security work. If that is uh, the security uh, team from, I don't know, testing stable, they, there will be much more work and you won't end up in um, better quality of the packages. So I think if it's official, people guess it's supported by any security team and that may be a wrong um, illusion for the u users, maybe. Well, if it would be easier to um migrate packages uh, from testing to backports that wouldn't be an issue because we have testing security support um, Raphael who isn't here right now uh, mentioned on the IRC that the DDPO mails uh, since the last two runs they do support uh, and mention RC bugs in stable so that the maintainers are also aware about that right now. Um, I just wanted to say that I, I think it's the wrong uh, impression that the security team supports official packages in stable or potentially in backports. It, it is more of a collaboration with the package maintainer and the security team. And if the package maintainer is not participating in that security work, then unfortunately the security team is stuck with the work. So it's more uh, the package maintainer that needs to be supporting the security rather than the security team being stuck with it. And I think developers need to make sure they are aware of that before they uh, put a package that is going into stable or potentially into backports. Yeah, I fully agree. We should make sure that uh, maintainers uh, really take care of their package and not only in unstable, but in all suites where it ends up? Um, the problem is um, that um, the packages on uh, backports are not uh, in any case uploaded by the package maintainer. Uh, Sometimes it's uploaded by anyone else and so the maintainer may be not aware that his package end up in backport so he doesn't care of it. And uh, if the guy who uploads it to backports doesn't care about any security stuff or something like that, it's it's in a state of clearly unmaintained. Also, the change log doesn't get back to the origin original package, so it's, it's kind of lost because w when the package is uploaded to backports. Uh, I don't get that. Uh, the the change log of uh, oh, the back change log. of a okay. backported package doesn't get back to the original package. Which is logical because yeah. not a single upload in the other suites is based on the backports one. But the thing of course is um, when you do backport you should contact the maintainer first and get his agreement before you upload. Um, one solution potentially to that problem is if all the mainta maintainers of packages were, if, if backports were an official, officially supported archive and you were 
uh, as a package maintainer, doing your job and supporting the security of that package as well. In, I'm sorry, supporting that security of that package in stable, but as well uploading to unstable, maybe developers would also be responsible to also do a backport and maintain that. It might, might be more than what people would like to take on. But like an NMU. <coughs> oh, no, if you're the pigeon maintainer, uh, pack, package maintainer, you are responsible to maintain the security through the life of stable. Uh, as well as uploading to unstable, but then in this case, uh, also uploading to and doing a backport to the backports. There are often enough uh, people who do upload packages to backports and don't care about updating the package there anymore. This is most of the problems we have with security on backports. If the people uploading the packages to backport would track the package better and not just upload it once so they have their pet feature in backports and don't care for it after it anymore that would definitely enhance and, and improve the situation making it official and having better integration with the BTS probably will already solve a part of that so uh, hi I'm I'm a little confused. I'd like to take a step back here and sort of understand the goal behind having a consistent policy for all of the above. Um, what I'm really hearing consistently across all these messages is that these various distributions serve different purposes with different levels of support. I mean, I think one of the things people like out of backports is that you can get something backported even if the maintainer doesn't want to do it and isn't interested in supporting it. Um, that's something that some of the users of backports want. One of the things that people like about Volatile is that, you know, it has less review than stable updates. Um, one of the things that people like about security is that, you know, it has privacy. I mean, basically, that there are some things that go into security that are confidential, and you don't know about them until they get published. Um, and one of the things that people like about s stable is that it's really conservative. I mean, I guess it might be nice to have all of these place, things written down in a single place, but I'm having a hard time understanding how you could have a consistent policy because you don't have consistent goals. Well, I was not uh, talking about a consistent policy, but either uh, rather uh, having uh, a, a joint document specifying what the rules are, so that uh, instead of uh, people uh, always coming to the release team asking about volatile and about backports, um, that they know where they should go and how they should proceed. Okay. Does, does anyone disagree with that? I don't know. I mean, I, I, okay, I guess my question is if, if no one disagrees with that, is it is it harder than getting the right, what, what makes it harder than getting the right people um, you know, the maintainers of backport security, stable and volatile, in a room with a wiki. True, but uh, the thing is also that some of the policies that are uh, there now are a bit outdated. They are, uh, they are not always complete. Um, like um, the rule about not having uh, packages uh, from testing um, unchanged uh, uploaded to backports is not mentioned. Um, so I think uh, the policies should be uh, complete, they should be um, up to date, and they should be um, in one place so everyone can find them easily. Um, everyone uh, can also um, uh, have way more easy um, see what's outdated, what needs to change, um, how do I uh, w decide where to upload uh, or where I should uh, find the package.
from what I've heard up to now, I'm uh, still confused whether we all agree on the goals of the different distributions and uh, the support levels. Um, and I think this is the first thing we should agree on. Uh, and then we should have a policy uh, which is uh, written down anywhere. Um, so I don't know whether we have reached this already, um, that we have agreed on um, what we want. And yes, maybe some others can say what really is the state, whether we have an uh, agreement over all in the room, maybe. <laughs> Well, I do think that um, uh, all the suites um, have a different target, and uh, so in that regard, um, it, they are all different. But I think the support you expect in all of them is almost the same. You you expect that in any suite um, the package is maintained, that the package, um, when there is a security issue, that it gets fixed. Maybe not as fast as in the usual archives, but you you expect that it's maintained, that it doesn't break, that it keeps working, and um, that it doesn't have any security issues. Um, one of the things uh, I also want um, to mention is um, currently there are um, some package maintainers considering setting up yet another archive and the reason being that uh, many of the web applications are architectural packages and they uh, don't need any change uh, when they would end up in backport um, but as it currently is not allowed and they really want for their user base um, to make it really easy to install them um, they are thinking about setting up another archive So it's easier to run a whole archive and add the whole crap of it you have with it instead of just telling the users to add two lines to its config file instead of just one? Well, the thing is, if if you need to explain pinning, um, you can keep on explaining pinning all the time. That is one stance on the backports org side. There's also an explanation of pinning that is ready to use for backports org. For backports, but if you want to use testing because you want uh, the backport at once. You do want the testing version then. You yeah. just have a pinning configuration for all users that are using. Testing, yeah. I don't see that much problem in doing it. Also, maybe just talk to the backports maintainers of getting the policy adapted for such kind of web application and then show some activity in maintaining those packages also because that's one reason why they aren't currently laughed on the archive. Um, I might propose then a somewhat radical solution to this which would be to create a build D for backports that would just automatically backport any package uploaded into unstable and the FTBS failed to backport from source uh, mail would be sent to the package uploader uh, who could then try to fix any uh, failed backporting. Um, as someone who has uploaded a lot of backports to backports.org, I very rarely have to actually make any source changes to actually backport even uh, other architecture uh, rather than architecture all packages. You just make a change log entry saying I backported it from testing and you build it. And uh, the only problem with the, the such a build D would be that uh, the backport would not be tested by somebody. Um, but uh, this might be a way to get backports for quite a lot of packages very easily and backports that failed could have the proper email sent to the maintainer who could then work on fixing it. 
I only have one amendment to what Micah said. He said when somebody uploads to unstable, but the policy for 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 backports it's to backport packages from testing. So when some package trans transitions from unstable to testing, it's probably the best time to actually try to do the automatic backport. Yeah, that's what I meant. Um, about automatic backport, it's still good to do it right next when you upload to unstable because then you have the gap time between testing transition if the automatic uh, update fails. So the automatic check should be done with the upload to unstable directly so you have time to work on it before it hits testing. Um, the problem with this uh, web app stuff is um, the maintainer, the FTP master of uh, backports doesn't like uh, to support the PHP stuff and uh, I can completely understand that but um, there is also the problem when users using pinning they often uh, have a problem with this and maybe they end up in a system they don't like to and uh, so the goals, the goal that to get it into backport is concurrent to uh, the problem that end up uh, really huge crappy stuff into uh, the backport archive. So if we can solve this problem, we can we can maybe um, kick out the rule to not uh, upload packages which come. Uh, installed from testing without any changes. Maybe that be a solution not to set up another uh, suite. I like the idea of having uh, packages automatically built for backports, but um, what uh, happens to changes to those backported packages uh, like changed uh, build dependencies for backports also uh, if a new version gets into testing or unstable this must be handled somehow I don't know well if it has changed dependencies or build dependencies um it's just a matter of making sure that um, these dependencies or build dependencies are also in backport. Um, I wanted to. If it to makes sense, of course. Because yeah, of course. If it makes sense, uh, if if we try to upload to backports every. Uh, package which needs some dependencies which are only available in unstable, we probably end up duplicate unstable to some degree. I don't think that's what we actually want. And on the other hand, the automatic um, backports would probably work better, although what uh, um, it was said before, it is a good idea to test early. Uh, it probably, On the other hand, it's probably some wasted power because many of the versions uploaded to unstable never transition to testing. So I don't think it's a problem for people using, it's not such a real problem for people using testing, uh, un um, stable, that the version which landed in testing lands, let's say, one or three, two days or three days later than it landed in, in testing itself. So it, usually it takes more for backports to actually provide that version currently so if it's a week because it's automatically done it's not such an issue now some of the time you don't have the version at all so it's actually even better than we have today you, you don't have to have an ideal situation from the, the get-go that's my opinion at least I'm not sure that having uh, the automatic ones end up in the proper uh, backports archive is actually a good idea because many of um, the 
backports are meant to be installed um, uh, on their own, so not together with all the other packages. Um, so if you want to use a backport, it's normally you use one package um, from backports. If you are going to just have them all uh, automatically built, it's, uh, it doesn't always make sense because not all of the features um, really need to be backported. You still want a stable system where you use uh, one newer version of one package or m maybe a, a couple, but not, not many. So I, for myself, dislike automatic backports too, but in the end, that's a decision for the backports maintainers to do. Um, for the specific web apps case you mentioned, I would say please go to FTP Master first and talk about it. We currently need you to develop a feature to have multiple suites with various policies applying, maintained by different people, where FTP Master is just supporting the archive and policy what goes in and what goes where is done by other people. And web apps might be a, just a suite without the, within that framework. It wouldn't be exported to FTP Debian org main mirrors because we don't want to have much more load on those main mirrors. But we integrate volatile, we need a different policy for the volatile, volatile archives there. We integrate backports somehow and need to export it that in some case we will get data Debian org and have to export that. And it wouldn't be too hard to just run another suite and keep the whole work of running a complete archive from other people away and just let them do the policing on stuff which gets in, which gets out. Um, I uh, would like to also point out that um, since I think we probably most of us agree that um, the usual use case for backports is that you just pick up one or two packages which are interested in, in having newer versions or uh, which have, m let's say, w features which you're interested in and mostly run stable, um, we, should, we should try to establish if we want to have apt modif modified. So uh, by default, stable always has as priority over backported packages and um, even though you you would have let's say backport sources and stable sources and the version in backports is higher I don't know which way it's better do you want to have this built-in ap apt or you want to have pinning you don't need to build that into app because that's set up in the backports archive it's not automatic yes so it will never select the backports version unless you tell it to It's one line in the release file that says not automatic yes. And with that app knows I don't take any version from that unless the user tells me to. So any other comments or questions or suggestions? Well, I think the one, <coughs> excuse me, the one thing that uh, people keep bringing up is uh, what what is it that a package maintainer should be responsible for when they upload something into the archive, and we need to come to some agreement and make that agreement publish in some way. That uh, I would propose that if you are uploading a package into the archive and it passes new that you are committing to supporting that package uh, both in bugs, new versions in unstable, but uh, the, through the lifetime of stable for security support, and which is how it is now, and I hope everybody understands that and uh, when they are uploading new packages, but then the amendment would be to also support a backported version of your package. And if we could get agreement on that, then we could move forward in a, in a much nicer integrated way. Hi. There's no way 
I'm willing to support backported versions of my package that I didn't backport. That just doesn't make sense to me as a maintainer. There are some versions of my packages that I know aren't stable and that you know I, I'm very careful to make sure they would never get into a stable release. Um, and they're works in progress. And if someone were to go stick those in back ports, um, I would be, well, I mean, you know, that's up to them, but don't expect me to help clean up the pieces. Um, if I stick it in back ports, that's an entirely different situation. And yes, of course I'm willing to support it. But the thing is, if you say you make sure that it doesn't hit a stable release, you probably also make sure that it doesn't ha hit testing because that's the staging area for the next stable release and that's the area from which the backport sits, is taken. And that actually makes probably more sense into uh, supporting the next stable release because if you think a package is not appropriate for the next stable release and you or you don't think it's appropriate for backports it's probably not appropriate for the next stable release so if if it keeps out if you keep it out of testing in the first place that's a good thing but sometimes you even if your package is not uh really ready for a stable release, you want to migrate it to testing for transition reasons to not block uh, hundreds of packages. So in that case, it may not be a good idea to backport it. I, I think there are just simple, trivial, technical ways around this problem by like filing a bug against your package to keep it out of backports uh, by tagging it with something. I mean, there's easy ways to make sure that if we were going to go down this route, that your package didn't automatically get put into backports if you thought it was inappropriate. There's multiple ways that that could be implemented, I think. Um, but you maybe have the same problem with backports if they're uh, you 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 keep out your package from backports. You also blocking uh, packages which which have been to need updated in backports. So there is the same problem. Okay, uh, I think it's time now uh, to conclude um, because well, um, they are telling me that um, it's time. So. <laughs> um, I think we can um, further discuss these things uh, on the mailing list um, of backports um, of um, volatile or even release. Um, so uh, thank you all for your uh, cooperation and um, let's hope that uh, we get a better support for all of these uh, suites and archives. <laughs>